Right. School is in session. Hell yeah! Hey YouTube, my name is Sven. Welcome to the Metal Foundry. This video is inspired by one of my friends who asked me a question on how he had to put which pedal in which order on his pedal board. And I said, you know what? I can tell you that, but it's better that I make a video about it. And before I make that video, I want to explain you first what each effect does and how each pedal works. Because before you know where to place it, you know you have to, you have to know what it does, right? So this, this video will be the first one in a series of two or three videos. This will be a general introduction to each effect and what it does. And in the second video, I will tell you where to place it and how it works in that particular setting. And before I go into each effect, I will tell you how I will group each effect. I will write it down on my board, as you can see, right here. There. We have our miscellaneous effects. We have our overdrive. We have our time-based effects and we have our modulation effects. First pedal I want to talk about is the tuner. The guitar, the pedal tuner, the guitar tuner. It comes in different variations. You can either have a tuner in the form of a guitar pedal, you can have a rack mounted tuner, or you can have a tuner that's clipping on the neck of your guitar. And you can also have a pocket tuner that you carry around like a Gorg CA30. That's my first guitar tuner I still use it. Those things are really indestructible if you pay a little bit of attention with them. So first of all, the tuner. Tuner, basic stuff, just tune, make sure you can tune your guitar, get it in the right tuning. I will put this one in the miscellaneous category, right over here. There we go. I'm not sure if I will have enough room, but we will see that further. Okay, cool. The next one that I want to... Ah, I forgot one category. I forgot volume, expression and filter. Also very important. The Wah Pedal. The Wah Pedal is made famous by Jimi Hendrix, Kirk Hammett. It's basically a filter or, or a certain EQ that you, an EQ curve that you sweep around. And when you sweep it, it will create a wow, wow, wow sound or like a wailing dog. <laughs> but that one goes right over here indeed. That's basically a filter that you move around using the potentiometer that's in there and the potentiometer that you will activate by moving the pedal up and down. You can change different parameters, you can change on certain pedals, you can change the Q. The Q factor is basically the width of the frequency sweep that you're doing and some other parameters that you can change as well. I personally use a uh, Crybaby from Hell, but you have different other wah pedals. Kirk Hammond has his own uh, signature wah pedal and you also have John Petrucci who has its own signature wah pedal and wah pedals come in different form and shapes and um, different forms and brands. Uh, the most famous one are the Crybabies by Dunlop but you also have other ones by Vox and so on so yeah. Then the overdrive. Ah. An OD pedal is an overdrive pedal or a boost pedal. or a distortion pedal. And by that, I've also named the three categories in which they come, in my point of view, at least. Because you have either a clean boost, that is just a clean boost, is boosting your signal, you just give your, you give your guitar signal a bump without distorting it. And that will make sure that your amp gets a hotter signal to begin with and start, goes into breaking up, easy, it will be easier to break up. So when the sound signal is breaking up, you will get a nice grainy sound, and that's what a clean boost does. Then you have an overdrive itself, so then you will basically already start to distort the sound a bit, and then you will put that into an amplifier, and that will even be, even be more amplified and distorted by the amplifier. And then you have just a classic distortion pedal. That distortion pedal will distort the sound completely, and you put that one basically in front of a clean channel of an amp, or in front of a power amplifier. So your amplifier itself will be clean and you just amplify the distorted sound while with an overdrive and the boost you will kick an already overdriven amp a bit further. If you use a clean boost or an overdrive pedal you will either add a little more gain or you will start compressing the sound a bit 
further as well and rounding up the low end so the low end will be a little bit tighter and more defined so that's why i would use a overdrive pedal in a high gain setting at least then we go into modulation effects. The modulation effects are a little bit more complicated. A modulation effect will modulate the sound, will change the sound, and in that you have three basic categories that you can see in the studio. But for guitarists, there are much more different effects available. You have um, a tremolo effect that will, yeah, it does what it says. It's like a guitar tremolo, but it will create a certain vibration or a vibrato effect. But you also have a phaser a flanger and a chorus and two of them the chorus and the flanger work a bit in a similar way where the chorus will add a duplication of the signal at a delay time to create a sort of choir or a chorus so it will you will if you play one note you will hear several notes at the same time and that's with a delayed effect so it's basically adding a time delayed copy of the original signal on top of the new of uh, of the original single and the chorus goes right here with the modulation effects then as i said the flanger the flanger gets its name from the studios they were using tape machines a lot in, the, in that back in the time when they were using analog effects and analog tape machines they invented a certain way to flange to create a flange effect basically by sending the original signal through one side of the chain and then a copy of that same signal on a different tape and then they were putting their hand on the flange of the tape machine to slow it down a bit so that effect flanging created the for the name flanger and goes over there and then the phaser the phaser or phase shifter is something completely different uh, a phaser or a phase shifter has no delay at all, but will create an inverted phase of that kind of, of, of the same original signal. And it will sweep. It will have create a sweeping pattern. And when it comes at a certain frequency, that frequency gets cancelled out and filtered away. So that the phase shifts of that particular signal. And then it will shift around from left to right, for example. And the width and the pattern of the frequency sweep and the speed and so on can also be changed by the control knobs on the effect pedal itself. And the phaser goes, or the phase shifter goes over here. Also with the modulation effects. Another important effect that we have, volume pedal. The volume pedal, I will tell you in the next video where you can place it. It has different ways. A volume pedal is just, yeah, a different, it's just an, an alternative for the volume knob that you have on your guitar. So you have purists that say that every knob on a guitar is just a nuisance and it is not necessary. So you can either use a volume knob pedal in your pedal board. You can use this to create volume swells in the beginning of your signal or you can place it a bit further in the end where you in that matter if you place it a little bit further down down the chain you can change the volume of the chain itself and play in slow in lower volume in a live setting that's not something that i would use it for i would use it more in the beginning of the chain or i would not use it at all because i have my volume knob on my guitar but i will put it on the expression pedals section over here there we go then we have the noise suppressor or noise gate the noise gate or noise suppressor are two different things. This, before I started making this video, I had a discussion with a friend about the difference uh, and in the way a noise suppressor and a noise gate work. A noise gate really blocks off the sound completely. It blocks when you, when you stop playing, or and a noise suppressor will suppress a certain frequency. Um, this one goes particularly with the miscellaneous effects or utility effects or whatever you want to call it next that i have here compressor compressor is not always necessary a compressor is an effect that's also used in the studio you can and on different other instruments in the guitar setting it will boost certain levels that are more silent and will top off the peaks of a certain of other level that are way too high so that's as you can set a thir certain threshold and it will squash the frequencies to a certain level to make the sound difference to make the left volume difference a bit smaller 
if that makes sense. And correct me, please, if I make a mistake, please correct me in the comment in the comment section below. I also learn while I make these videos, but that is at least how I see how things work. Uh, compressor pedal is not something that I'll use because I also have I mostly play with EMG pickups and those compress the hell out of my guitar signal already and every actually every part of the guitar chain will add some compression maybe that's an idea for a different video if you have questions about the applications of a compressor whether you need it just put them in the comment section and I will make a video about it so let me know if that's interesting and now I will move further to the EQ equalizer. Equalizer is in, in this in this particular example I have created a five band equalizer. Five band means you have five different frequencies, and you can change the level of each frequency of each frequency to boost them or to cut them. But that one will go particularly in the miscellaneous section over here. Then we go. For the final section, we go for the time-based effects. Time-based effects are the delay and the reverb. The delay will do exactly as it does. It will create a delayed copy of the original signal. And you can either blend it with the original signal or you can replace it. You have different forms of delay. You have a ducking delay. You have a ping-pong delay. You have a tape delay. You have a digital delay. Everything that delays your sound, this one goes in the time-based effects. And last but not least, reverb. Reverb is creates a certain echo of reverberation effect. It's like when you're yelling into a hall or into a church. That effect, that's a reverb. In different reverb pedals, you can have different types of, of reverb. We can have a hall reverb. You can have a spring reverb. A spring reverb is, is when you, for example... Just imagine when you have a metal box and you put a spring inside, you, you tie a spring between both ends and then you just touch it, it will just wow, make a certain sound, it will echo a bit, it will reverberate a bit, that's the reverb effect. And we put that one with the time-based effects. Almost forgot two very important effects that Tom Morello would not be happy about if he would forget it. So, and corn. So, in this category, also for the expression effects and for a bit for the miscellaneous effects, we have the whammy, the whammy pedal. The whammy pedal is made famous indeed by guys like Tom Morello and by corn. You, they basically create it to, you can have a sort of pitch shift and it also comes with a pitch pedal. So the pitch shifter or the whammy, those two together exist in one pedal and you also have one particular pedal like the Digitech drop which with which you can with which you can change your tuning without having to tune your guitar and this one goes in my opinion at least and this one goes in my opinion as a crossover between the miscellaneous and the volume and the expression pedals and the whammy pedal for me goes clearly over here and for the next part of this video, you will hear different effects that I will record with my Boss GT8 because there's everything built in and then you will be able to listen to what that does so you can hear a difference for yourself. This is the sound demonstration. This is the clean setting.
Have any questions about these pedals or if you have if you spot a mistake that i made please let me know in the comment section and also let me know what you think for the next video i will tell you more about in which order you have to place these effects at least in my opinion that's all for me this week if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and if you like the content that i'm creating on this channel and you want to help me grow my channel please subscribe and click the notification bell to be notified whenever i upload a new video which will be every single week my name is Sven. You've been watching The Metal Foundry, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.